In this video, we will see React state in depth with the example. So what is React state? React state is a variable which React constantly watching and when that variable change, then React quickly display that change on our application. Let's understand React state with creating this simple counter. So watch this complete video, you will learn React state very clearly. So here is the new fresh React application. In this app component, I remove all the code and for counter, I created this one variable using let count equals to 1. And to increase this counter in JSX, I added one button for increase counter. And also display here count variable. And in this button, we have click event and pass this handle counter function which means whenever we click on this button, this function will run. See, when we click on this button, we get this console message. Now what we want to do is, when we click on this increase button, we simply want to increase our counter by 1. So here, we do something like this, count plus plus, and let's simply console.log counter value and display here this count. Now can you guess the output? You might say our counter will increase by 1. Let's verify this. So we click on increase and nothing happened here. Our counter is not increased by 1. But in the console, we get the updated count. But why we are not getting the updated counter on our web page? That's because of this count is normal JavaScript variable. We have to tell React that we want to display the changes of this count variable and we do that using React state. This React state allows us to manage and display the changing data in our application. So when we define our variable as normal JavaScript variable, then React will not reflect changes if we change that variable value. But if we define our variable as state, then React will reflect those changes if we change that variable value. So in simple words, state is used to tell React, watch this variable and if it change, then reflect those changes immediately on our application. Now the question is, how can we define our variable as a state variable? So for that, we have to use one React hook, which is use state. If we don't know what is React hook, then in short, hooks are the special function which React creates for performing the special action. For example, for creating the state value, we have to use useState hook. Now let's see how we can use useState and this is one of the most important and most used hook in React. So to use any hook, first we need to import that hook from the React library. And also all hooks name start with the prefix use. So at the top, after this React, add comma and in curly brackets we add use state now in our functional component we call this use state hook and inside this we have to pass default value of our variable which is one because we want to set count as one now this function will return an array so let's store that in variable called count array and after that Let's simply console.log this count array to see what is inside this array. Save the changes and take a look. See, this array has two elements. The first element is our original value which is 1. And the second element is one function. Let me show you. So first of all, we store first element of count array in variable called state count. And now, let's display this state variable on our web page. So here, I am not removing this normal variable because I want to show you the difference. So we duplicate this line by pressing shift plus alt plus down arrow in windows and shift plus option plus down arrow in mac. These are the little tricks which will increase your overall speed. Now at the place of this count, we write state count and here we add state count. Save this and see here 
these both looks the same. Now let's see how can we update this state count value. So for updating the state value, we have function as second element in this use state. So back to VS code and we store this counter as second element in variable called set state count. This is the common naming convention for use state. So the value of the state we call as normal variable name and function which can set the value of that variable, we add set prefix for that function name. For example, state count, set state count, loading, set loading, etc. Now whatever value we pass in this set state count function, it will be the value of this state count variable. Let me show you what I mean. So here, we want to increase this state count by 1 when we click on this increase button. So we write set state count and inside this, we want current value which is state count and plus 1. So when we click on this button, first it will get the current value of state count and then add 1 into it. And this set state count function will set this value which is 1 plus 1 as this state count. Simple as that. Save the changes and take a look. Click on this button and see state count variable is increasing by 1 but old count variable is still the same. And also old count is always state 1. Why? Because when any state change in our component, whole component gets re-render or we can say run again. And that's why this old count is always stay at 1. Don't worry, we will understand this re-rendering in details in upcoming videos. Now another thing is, if we refresh the page, this set state count again start with 1. Because here we set default value as 1. If we pass here 5, then on refresh we get here 5. So now let's remove this old count variable and also remove this h1 tag. Now here our code looks little bit ugly because we can see for creating one state variable we have to create three lines of code. Imagine if we have three to four state variables then how messy our code will become. So let's make this code shorter using array destructuring. Let me show you. So I comment out these three lines and we write here use state and inside this we pass default value to 1. Now let's store this in variable and at the place of variable name we add square brackets and inside this first write the first variable name which is state count and then write function name which is set state count. So this single line works the same as these three lines of code and that will make our code clean and easy to maintain. And also let me show you one bonus trick for creating state in just a second. For that you have to install this ES7 React Snippets extension in your VS code, otherwise this trick don't work. So here in our component, we have to simply write use state and select this use state snippets by pressing tab and see it will create state for us. Now without pressing any other key you have to write the variable name. Without pressing I mean without pressing control or escape. Write here variable name and simply press tab. It will automatically write second variable name which is our function. And then here we can write our default value and press escape. Done. Now let's recap state in React. So state is used to tell React that was this variable and if something change then reflect those changes on the web page. Now to define state variables we use use state hook. So to use use state hook we need to first import that and use it inside the functional component. Here you can pass any type of data like boolean, number, text, object, array, anything and then store it in variable using array destructuring. The first variable 
is its current value and the second one is the function for updating that value. Simple as that. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned React State. If you really like this video, then hit the like button. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, then you can subscribe to this channel. Comment what you want to learn next and I will see your smiling faces in the next video.